What's up guys and welcome back to Too Much Tech and in today's video we are going to be unboxing the Dell XPS 17 2020 edition just dropped just came in the mail oh I was working on another video but uh <laughs> we put that one on the back burner for a second so I'm gonna go ahead and do this thing is heavy we're gonna go ahead and unbox this bad boy let me unplug my space bar my, not my space bar. Let me unplug my keyboard so I don't accidentally include some copyright music. Look at this. So the box says XPS right there, looking pretty slick. And then of course we got the laptop front and center. This thing is, honestly, this is not much bigger than my XPS 15 that I'll grab in just a second for a little bit of a size comparison. But let's see here. So charger here is the charging brick usb-c cable so this must charge with usb-c and the nice part about the new xps is that it actually comes with this uh usb and hdmi dongle in the box and no additional charge so that's cool i say at no additional charge like the laptop wasn't expensive enough as it is but um yeah, because I want to say this config ran about three-ish grand or over three grand, something like that. I'll throw the specs up on the screen now so you guys can uh, see what all the specs are. But this is the i7. It's got, I think, either 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, one of the two. We'll pull it up in Windows in a bit. It's got the 4K screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It is IPS, so it's not an OLED screen, unfortunately. They don't have uh, an OLED option anymore like they did on uh, the previous generation XPS, but hopefully with some time, they'll end up bringing back the OLED. And then this one actually does have the RTX 2060 as well. I can't remember if it's a 2060 or 2060 Super, but I think it's a 2060 Super. Let's see if they give me a spec sheet in here. XPS 17, 9700. This is just like how to plug it in, how to turn it on and whatnot. Let's see here. Thunderbolt 3, so we got four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two speakers on the side, an SD card slot. Like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but all large production laptops need to have SD card readers in 2020. This box is still heavy. Like, it makes me think that, like, there's something under here. All right, so there's nothing under there. It's just a really, really heavy duty box. This is actually a really nice box. Like, I don't know if I like this box better or the MacBook. Like, the MacBook just. Waiting for it to fall out of the vacuum seal box is okay, but this I feel like is just so much more elegant. You see the XPS logo up here, and like it's got magnets and everything. So I feel like this is a more modern design. And I mean, speaking of which, with a modern design box, let's check out this modern design laptop. So all of our accessories to the side. Let's check out the hardware on this thing. So we got our SD card reader right here two usb 3.1 thunderbolt 3 ports a headphone jack speaker grill right here then we've got ventilation at the bottom rubber feet so it doesn't slide around your desk it's got windows ugh, whoa it's got windows 10 pro this laptop it does it does feel a little sharp too but on the other side we got two more thunderbolt 3 ports and then a kensington lock another speaker grill let's go ahead and uh pull the plastic off this baby. Ooh, weighted hinge. Okay, okay. Man, this thing is impressive. Holy crap. Impressive AF. Come on, Dell. I see you. I see you. Man, this thing. This thing is fire and it's not even. Oh, this keyboard feels nice. Probably a fingerprint sensor on the power button right there. Keyboard sounds pretty good. We got an absolutely massive trackpad. Like this thing is cool. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, who needs a MacBook when you got freaking massive trackpad like this and a quality keyboard too. The control button is in the right spot. Man, I can tell you like when using Mac OS and the MacBook Air, my God. The buttons, they're all like arranged differently and I get it's a different OS, but um, 
why do we have to change the order? Like, let's, I know it's probably been like that forever and I'm just new to it, but still swapping between Windows and Mac and all that stuff, this whole bottom row is all messed up. And if you get the newer MacBooks with the touch bar, the whole top row is all messed up as well. So let's go ahead and set up this uh, XPS 17. The bezels on this thing are so impressive. Like they're barely there. They're barely even there. Like they're so small and the webcam is at the top. Like they don't have some weird webcam placement at the bottom, like in the chin of the laptop or anything. The keyboard backlight is really nice. Man, like I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And it looks big, but even just using it at like a regular distance, a problem that I have like with my XPS uh, 15, I still feel like 15 inch screen size is good, it's portable, but you still kind of got to squint at things. I don't really think I'm going to have, um, I don't really think I'm going to have that issue really using this laptop, to be honest. Should I main this one? I don't know. Should I sell my XPS 15 and get an XPS 17? I don't know. Maybe eventually. We'll see. Let's go ahead and get Windows set up. Two massive speaker grills right here. 10 Gen i7, I guess it's going to RTX 2060 as well. This keyboard, it looks, it looks better. It looks a little bit bigger. This display, I'm still like in awe. Hold on, let's, uh, let's turn the brightness real quick too. Okay, I don't, I don't think I can mess with the brightness yet. Let's, I'll let this do its thing. I'm going to grab my XPS real quick. So peak brightness is pretty good. I wouldn't call it anything incredible, but it's decent. Go ahead and download Chrome on here because uh, we all know that Chrome is the best. So let's just do that right now while we got the time. Cause it ain't gonna take that long. It's Chrome is life. What the heck? They got a new welcome screen for Chrome now? Oh, this is, oh, I was about to say. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Dell. <laughs> uh, oh boy, Dell, uh, Dell, Dell, Dell. We just wanna use Chrome. We, get, we can play with the welcome screen later on. The stock wallpaper they give you is cool though. I mess with that. I wonder if that's a Windows thing or a Dell thing. Let's type in too much tech on Google and see what pops up. Okay, YouTube channel pops up first. Okay, okay. Okay. Should probably swap this video. I think I would have something like a little bit more recent. Too much tech. A little bit better color corrected too. That that video was a little bit of a warm tint. That is for sure. So so far, the speaker quality sounds really good. The screen quality, to me, right now looks fantastic. Like, dang, I think it looks good. And the 16 by 10 aspect ratio too, like you will get like a little bit of letterboxing at the top of the screen when you're watching 16 by nine content, but it's really not that big of a deal. Like it gives you a lot more vertical space on the computer now. So typically when you would have a black bar at the bottom of your laptop and your screen, you really are just taking more advantage of that space now, instead of it being empty, now you have a bit taller screen. And that's really useful, you know, in productivity workloads too, like if you're just, you know, doing some photo editing or video editing or whatever, you can just see more of either the content that you're creating, you can see more of the document that you're typing, just there's less scrolling involved and you can view more information at one time. This does have like a really massive battery too, so I'm curious to see, you know, how long the battery life is gonna last. And obviously, you know, I'm gonna talk about all this stuff like after my full testing. This is really just the unboxing and first impressions of this laptop. And honestly, I'm like really impressed. Like the front facing speakers, that is a huge addition. Could they have put a number pad on here? They probably could have, but I don't really think a number pad would have been the best move to put on a keyboard like this. Like the speakers, the fingerprint sensor, the appropriately sized keyboard that's super comfortable to use, has good feedback, has a good sound as well. And the massive trackpad, um, I'm definitely cool with the changes that they made to the inside of the design. This carbon fiber feels different too, like it's soft and something about it just feels better. Like, I don't think this is gonna have as much like hand oils and fingerprints and stuff like that. Like it seems to 
repel those oils and materials and stuff like that a lot better than the previous carbon fiber inside did. So for comparison, here is my current XPS 15. It does not have as good of a weighted hinge. And now when we look at the design of the laptop, it is quite a bit different. So the carbon fiber material is different. It does a decent amount at not showing literally every single oil and everything on your pad right here. But here, this definitely feels better and a bit more premium. This is actually a bit cooler to the touch than this one is too. I wonder why that's the case. The old XPS 15, there is no front facing speakers. I think there might be front facing speakers on the new XPS 15. We'll see if I take a look at that one in the future as well. Fingerprint sensor here next to the delete key. And then on this one, the fingerprint sensor is actually off to the side of the keyboard as well. I was watching freaking too much Bryson. <laughs> <laughs> that quality Fortnite content, but this was actually a while ago. But side by side while I'm looking at them, the IPS screen does look very good, it's very bright. I'm looking at the OLED screen as well. Maybe it's just because the wallpaper is a bit different, but I still think the OLED screen looks better than the IPS screen. But the keyboard... So we have a bit more travel on the previous keyboard. This one has a bit less travel, but it does have, in my opinion, better feedback than this one is. But it's not quite as drastic as a change as like what Apple did like five years ago with the old MacBooks. This is just a little bit shorter throw key press, where this is a slightly longer throw. The keycaps on this one are a little bit wider. On here, they're a little bit more narrow. This space bar and the stabilizers have a bit better feedback than this one does too. So overall, in pretty much every aspect, the Dell XPS has been improved in every way. And now that they even offer a 17 inch screen size, if you want something a lot bigger, but without having to compromise a ton on like the design and honestly, even the portability, like look, this is the XPS 17 closed. This is the XPS 15 closed. And as you can see, the footprint really for a two inch bigger screen is not massively different between the two, which means that this one should be a bit more portable than like another like 17 inch for like, for example, this should be a lot more portable than like a 17 inch gaming laptop like that. You're going to leave that at home. You're not going to be taking that everywhere. And if you do, you're going to be taking it somewhere. You're going to be plugging into the wall and you're going to be stuck there. You're not going to be walking around the room and trying to collab and show people stuff and all that stuff like this. This is very workable. You can move around with this laptop. No problem. You might have to flex a little bit, but you can do it. A bigger 17 inch gaming laptop like I mean, even as heavy as like an area 51 M. That's not going down. You you stuck, brother. You stuck. But all right, you guys, that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick little unboxing and size comparison of the XPS 17 9700 versus the XPS 15. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see in the full review because I have reviewed like a few laptops before, but this one is like brand spanking new and I'm sure you guys want to know a few things about it. If you want to determine, you know, if you want to go with the XPS 17, if you don't go with the XPS 15, maybe even the 13, because they do pretty much share a very similar design language, but there are some key differences between the machines as well that we can also go over. So let me know what you guys want to hear in the full review in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I'll try to keep that in mind when I put together my thoughts for that. And yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. I will catch you guys in the next video. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new. Join my Discord if you have any other questions and just want to join the camaraderie of being part of the Too Much Tech fam. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. See you guys in the next one. Bye.